Well, hello, hello everybody. I hope you're all doing really well. I'm going to do something a little bit different this week. Um, I've come out to an area called uh, the Walbran with a, with a couple of clients and uh, they're here photographing old growth forest. Um, but unfortunately, the last couple of days, it's the weather has not been conducive to, <laughs> to uh, forest photography. It's been very sunny and, and actually very cold. Um, so I thought today we'd just go for a little walk uh, to an area that I've, I've never been to before. It's called the Castle Grove and uh, it takes about two hours uh, return and uh, so it's more of a scouting trip so I thought I'd take you along with me but before I take you on a trip to uh, the, uh, the Castle Grove just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, my trip out to uh, Port Renfrew Ferry Creek area a couple of weeks ago while I was in the area I came across a, a guy named Ken Miner and it was really interesting because he's shooting 8x10 glass plates he was, it's called the wet plate uh, collodion uh, process and uh, in his van in the back of his van he actually had a little dark room so uh, I just did a bit of a video with Ken and went through his process with him and it was really interesting so before we keep heading into the woods here I just wanted to uh, show you that clip because I thought maybe some of you might be interested in that hey everybody how's it going I uh, hope you're all doing great so I've come down to the Ferry Creek blockade again, which I've been coming to for a number of weeks now. There's quite a few people at the blockade because of the, the court injunction that's going on, whether they're going to log this area or not. Uh, but in the meantime, I've met up with quite a few uh, photographers uh, that are in the area photographing some of the old growth forest. And I bumped into this guy, uh, Ken Miner, who's doing uh, wet plate collodions, which is really interesting because I've never actually seen the process um, live myself. And what it involves is using a, a large format camera and uh, pretty much putting the film together in the field, shooting the film, and then processing the film after you've taken the image all out of the back of uh, his truck here, which is, really, which is really interesting. But rather than me try to explain the whole process and muck it up, because uh, it seems like I can't even get Ken's name right, um, is uh, let him explain the process. And, uh, and then I'll show you some, some close-ups of uh, what he's doing uh, with his camera and such. Now the camera he's using is 120 years old, so that's really interesting in, it, in itself. So uh, I'll just let uh, Ken take over the show and, and kind of go over his whole process here. So um, thanks, Adam. The wet plate collodion process was invented in 1850-ish. Um, it was the first viable photographic process to get photographers out of their field, or out of the studio, rather, into the field. Uh, what it involves is um, putting a collodion mixture, which is gun cotton dissolved in alcohol and ether with bromide and iodide salts within that. From there it goes into a silver nitrate bath which it sensitizes to light. It sits in there for about three or four minutes. From there it goes into the camera, make the exposure and back to the darkroom and develop it with a, a basic developer made with uh, iron sulfate, vinegar, sugar and alcohol. Um, and then once that's done it's light safe and it come out into the light and then I put traditional film darkroom fixer and it uh, develops or fixes into the final image. Um, I have I do tin types which this is a this is basically a plate that I would use for tin types but today I'm doing it on glass plate. It's the same process this would be a tin type glass would be an ambro type so that's what we're doing today. So do you use some, um, is it just, is it just plate glass? Or plate glass. Just plate glass? Yeah. So it's quite delicate then, you don't want to drop it at all? No, do you? <laughs> okay. Yeah, have done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, the glass gives a different, to me, a different feel to it. There's more depth, it seems, to the, to the glass. Um, 
Yeah. So would this be the same um, process that, say, Ansel Adams used back in the early days? Or? Ansel was using film. But wasn't he using uh, glass plates? At well, the start? it could have been glass dry plates. I'm okay. not too sure. So it would have been pre-manufactured dry plate on glass. Okay. So this right. is this is I have to make everything in the van. So I'm starting with just a, a clean piece of glass, pouring on the collodion into the silver. Put it into a, a dark, uh, what do you call it, a film holder. Yeah. Into the camera, back into the dark room, develop it, then out here. All right. And then after that, there's a whole washing series and then drying and varnishing. Yeah. And you can lose the image on each step of the way. So hopefully we won't lose the image Hopefully today. not. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, the van's almost ready. And then I'll, um, we'll get a plate going. All right. Sounds good. So I was uh, at an event at a, a neighborhood art thing, and I only had my 4x5, uh, I have an old Calumet. And I met a guy who was probably in his 80s, a retired Air Force photographer, and we started talking about cameras, and I said, yeah, one day I'd like to get an 8x10, and he goes, I have one! Come to the house to see it. So I went to his house, he pulled it out, and I go, oh my god, it's beautiful. And he put it away, and so I, a couple days later I called him, what are you going to do with that thing? So I was going to put it on eBay. I'm like, no, you're not. So I, uh, I bought it from him probably for a little bit too much money, but uh, pulled it out of the box and just been using it ever since. Is the, um, did you have to repair the bellows at all? Or? No, I've no? done nothing. Is it leather? Um, I think so, yeah. yeah. But so far it seems to be pretty light tight. Wow, that's in beautiful condition. It's pretty good, yeah. For, you know, I hope I'm as good a shape in 120. <laughs> good luck with that. Get the last bit of dust, if I can, off the plate. It's pretty messy, actually. Can't tell what side it's on always. I think we're good. So I'm going to pour the collodion on. It's a pretty viscous liquid and it smells. I glued the cap on. It's, um, like I said, it's ether and uh, cotton. It's pretty thick and syrupy. So this is the, the medium that holds the silver nitrate, basically. spill any but my luck lately has been not that great with that. Then your van stinks. Yeah. Oh that was pretty good. Oh, man, <laughs> strong. Alright, so if you don't mind slamming the door on me and yep. uh, I'll be out in three or four minutes. You got the uh, you got the camera set up. You got your chemicals on your on your plate plate glass, and I just got to load it up and. Yeah, so I'll check focus one more time because maybe the tree moved or. <laughs> but, so, uh, but when it comes to um, exposure, how do you do? You have a light meter, or how how do you? No, so it's pretty intuitive actually. Um, it's ISO maybe a one, maybe a point five. Uh, ISO um, and it's UV sensitive doesn't really see red uh, so you kind of you can kind of get an idea after shooting for a while okay. um, I'm thinking today here will be I'm thinking 45 seconds okay 
And That's how I go and by. What about your f-stop? You just leave it at a certain. Wide open. Wide open all the time. Wide open. Okay. Yep. And then just when it feels right, I close it. <laughs> so how how what's the widest aperture on this? I think this is a five. Oh, f five. Okay. That's pretty wide. Yeah. yeah. Oh, four. Oh, f four. F four. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see a thing. I hardly ever look at it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's my kind of photography. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just do it by feel. See the light of the stars. Hear the sound of the That's pretty good. That's the first time I've seen someone photograph with rubber gloves on. <laughs> about this process it really gets you in in the place present with the whatever the subject is yeah. and uh, when you're photographing people it's hard for them to, to sit for 20 or 30 seconds they don't understand how any little movement that they make is just going to show up as a blurry mess yeah. and it's like oh no, I could sit for 20 seconds no you can't because <laughs> I've heard that that's why in old photographs people look so stiff and uncomfortable because they, they would have a neck brace of some sort to hold them still. Yeah, basically it's just, uh, um, it's not, they're not clamped in, they're just resting against yeah, yeah. as a point of reference. So it's not really um, painful. <laughs> but yeah, any kind of smile or anything like that would could look kind of weird. A little odd. So, what are you uh, actually doing now? So, this is the fixer. Okay. So, this will change it to the the final image. And I got some weird stuff going on. All right. The detail must be incredible. Yeah, there's um, there's no grain to it, like black and white film. Yeah. But there's some. Model. Uh, it's from the developer, I think. The way it hit the plate when I poured it on, it might have splattered a little bit, so that uh, develops first. Okay. Or, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a mystery. As you can see, Ken had a few issues with the final results here, but I really like it. It suits the subject matter and the composition really well. So it was great hanging out with Ken, getting to know him a little bit and learning a bit about his process. It almost made me feel like getting my old 4x5 out and uh, shooting a little bit of film. to uh, make it across the creek <laughs> so, the, there used to be a bridge here and a cable car but they've all since washed out and there is a summer crossing that's you know works quite well when the water levels are, are low but the water levels are quite high so I just ended up taking off my boots and that it was a it was pretty cold um, the uh, the light is still not terribly exciting but uh, across the sign here so we're on the right trail and uh, supposedly somewhere down here there's a massive cedar so we made it to the, the giant castle tree and uh, yes it's most definitely a, a very large tree and it's amazing that it's it's just hanging on to the edge of this deep uh, valley here. Uh, the river that we crossed earlier is way down the hill here. And the cedar's just hanging on the edge. 
Um, photographically, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's hard to tell in this light, but it would be hard to photograph. You've got this boardwalk around it, which I, it doesn't really help photographically. Um, but again, we run into that problem of scale. Unless someone's standing next to it, then it's very difficult to uh, kind of see how big this, this tree is. Oh, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's absolutely freezing this morning. So I'm still in the wall brand with my clients and we camped up a little bit higher and it looks quite promising this morning. It's, it's clear or it's gonna be sunny today, but there's quite a bit of fog around. So I drove down to the valley here, hoping that perhaps there'd be fog in the trees. We might get some light beams coming through. And of course, the, the fog is sitting quite high in the, in the hills here, so there isn't any down here. It's a little, <laughs> a little disappointing because I haven't taken any photographs for the past two or three days. The weather has just been so clear. I, I don't mind. I think this is the first vlog where I actually haven't taken any photographs, uh, but it's been quite nice. We've been on some nice little hikes, just checking the area out. Um, but in the meantime, uh, the last couple of trips, I've been using a new product that a company sent me, and I thought I'd just uh, mention it because it, it's been really quite good. I was really surprised. I'll just uh, show you what it is. Because it's really cold out, uh, I had a company uh, send me out this, uh, this vest here to try out, and it's, it's made by a Canadian company called Ewool, and uh, it's actually an electric vest and I was a little apprehensive I thought oh, I don't know about that um, so the way it works is is that it actually has a battery pack in the back here and uh, there's a little uh, switch here and you just hold it in for three seconds and uh, it turns on now this is the high setting and uh, it starts to heat up within seconds and uh, it's been really good. Uh, I, I'm surprised, uh, especially when you're standing around waiting for the light or like this morning where you uh, want to get that chill off. Uh, it's great. I can feel the heat coming through my back and around the chest here. Um, now this particular vest here is a little bit short for me. Uh, this is a large, but I have quite a long back, so it could be a little bit longer. As far as the settings go, it has three different settings. So right now it's on high, uh, which is obviously the warmest, and it kicks in pretty quick. That lasts for only about two hours. And then there's a medium setting, which lasts for four hours, and then a low setting that lasts for eight hours. Uh, you can also plug it into your ATV or your Skidoo or even your car. So it's great that way. You can recharge the battery while, while the battery is in the, in the uh, jacket, or you can just take the jacket out, I mean, sorry, the battery out and recharge it that way. Comes with an AC uh, charger, so it comes with everything. There are a couple of things that I would like to see in the future. Uh, first of all, the battery, it, all it has is a port for the, uh, the actual jacket. It would have been nice to see like a, a USB-C or a USB port in there so you could hook your phone in if you had to and charge that up. And also, the company is called E-Wool and I honestly thought that the jacket was going to be made out of wool, uh, which probably wouldn't make any sense whatsoever, but it, it was kind of a little bit deceiving. It's, it's some kind of synthetic, probably polyester, uh, it's quite good material, um, they're very well made, uh, but yeah, e-wool, I, I mean I get the electronic part, but the wool part I, I didn't really get. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a really nice addition to uh, your kit. Now, uh, as far as weight goes, 
I'm not sure that I would be backpacking with this thing because it is a little, uh, a little heavy. Uh, but if you're working out of your car or, or like we are here, just hiking short distances, then uh, I think it's great for that. I mean, like this morning, I could hike to my location and if you get a little bit hot, you just turn it off. And then as soon as you get there and if you're waiting for the light, then you could just turn this thing on and uh, it just takes the chill off. So if you are interested in this jacket, uh, be sure to check out the link down below. And if you have any questions about it, be sure to leave them in the comments down below as well. Right, yeah, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not terribly optimistic this morning about the light. I, it's kind of a shame, uh, but this type of photography, you really need overcast conditions. The, the, uh, the direct sunlight doesn't, doesn't do it justice. Right, anyway, I'm going to get my stuff and, uh, and I'll go for a walk and see what we can find anyway. And uh, I don't know, it might be one of those trips where I just don't get any photographs, which would be a first for my YouTube channel. <laughs>